Good afternoon, uh, gentlemen. Um, it gives me great pleasure to talk about uh, Apache Traffic Server and uh, Yahoo's relationship with it over the years. Um, my name is uh, Vijay, and I'm a product manager with the Edge Services in uh, Yahoo. And my colleague here is Kit, uh, who's a principal engineer with the Media Group. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the history uh, of Apache Traffic Server uh, and Yahoo's involvement over the years. And Kit is going to focus on the business aspects of uh, working with the open source, what we have learned over the years. So as you can see, uh, Yahoo's relationship has been uh, more like a roller coaster ride. Uh, we've had some ups and downs, and uh, hopefully we are at the top uh, back again right now. So it all started back um, in the late 90s uh, when Inktomi created the traffic server. And there was some rapid adoption and development in those initial years um, when there were big customers like AOL and At Home uh, adopting Traffic Server. Um, there are some interesting use cases for which uh, Traffic Server was used, transcoding uh, images into smaller sizes for uh, dial-up users. So some of you may remember those uh, stories from back then. Um, subsequently, um, Inktomi was acquired by Yahoo in uh, 2002. Um, but we did not do uh, anything with it for a couple of years. So it was uh, gathering dust. Um, and then at around 2005, uh, it was renamed as YTS, or Yahoo Traffic Server, and efforts around it uh, resumed. And it gained uh, rapid traction and adoption within the company. And by 2010, uh, 30 billion objects, 400 terabytes a day uh, was kind of getting served through Traffic Server. And uh, in 2009, um, a bunch of gentlemen uh, who are uh, here in this room, uh, along with uh, some others, decided to open source uh, um, ATS, I mean, traffic server. And, uh, to, and uh, they actually, it was a lot of effort. It took about uh, 700,000 lines of code change over a period of nine months. Uh, most of it, uh, I uh, understand, was related to ripping out a bunch of code to support uh, multiple uh, operating systems. And it became an Apache incubator in uh, July 2009, and finally accepted as a top-level project in April 2010. So when we, um, when we open-sourced uh, traffic server, uh, there were certain areas where uh, uh, it could further be improved. Some of the areas of improvement that, that were identified included uh, performance-related areas, like uh, being able to handle uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, concurrent connections. Uh, the lo inherent lock design caused problems with uh, long tail latencies. Um, state machine was fixed, and uh, that prevented some of the extensibility that certain use cases uh, demanded. Programmability was uh, considered as uh, not too great, uh, given the asynchronous model uh, and the plugin architecture. Uh, and not too many people understood the continuation-based model, so it was not very developer-friendly, especially for those without sufficient experience uh, on it. So um, at that particular point, uh, a bunch of folks uh, within the company also tried uh, an, another experiment uh, based on user fibers, basically using the uh, concept of core routines. Uh, where instead of relying on threads and preemptive context switching, um, uh, they were doing uh, um, uh, function call based uh, in the user space uh, context switching. And um, this basically allowed a kind of a synchronous uh, programming model and also a lock free environment so that uh, long tail latencies could be uh, addressed. So these were the objectives or the motivations for the uh, experiment. Uh, but then, on the other hand, uh, both uh, the YTS, the Yahoo Traffic Server, as well as the uh, just out, uh, open sourced Apache Traffic Server was gaining a lot of traction. So uh, in the period between 2010 to 2013, uh, there were about 6,000 nodes running uh, YTS and, and a bunch of small properties uh, running ATS in parallel. Um, so Yahoo was never out of running ATS, and it was sustained by the activities of a few people uh, during those period. A uh, lot of different use cases uh, were covered given the uh, range of businesses that Yahoo was into. 
uh, reverse proxy, forward proxy, caching, SSL termination, edge side includes, uh, denial of service protection. These were some of the things that we were doing. Uh, we were truly heterogeneous in the sense there were pockets of the company using Squid and Nginx as well. Um, this led to a lot of uh, technology fragmentation and uh, support was be becoming a problem because there were not too many people who were experts in all these and having to manage such a vast different uh, um, set of technologies for caching and proxying was posing to be difficult. So here I'm going to briefly talk about uh, one of the use cases uh, that, that we were using uh, Traffic Server for uh, called uh, Edge Side Includes or ESI. So basically, uh, in a large web property like uh, Yahoo, uh, each page is made up of multiple assets. Some of them static, um, some of them are dynamic and uh, personalized. Uh, the static objects are more cacheable, whereas the dynamic ones uh, are typically not. So if you need to assemble them, one, one after the other serially, that would uh, increase the page load time. So um, edge side includes enables uh, us to stitch the page on the edge by uh, making parallel calls and then caching the static objects on the edge. And uh, this was made possible by uh, traffic server. Another uh, use case that uh, Brian touched upon in the morning is about SSL termination where typically all the end user facing communication happens over SSL and internally within the data center communication happens over uh, HTTP. That way uh, all user uh, facing communication is encrypted. And uh, uh, another advantage of doing this is uh, a whole bunch of properties behind the scenes uh, which uh, actually own the origin servers, they do not need to do the work to uh, terminate SSL. It can happen uh, by a small, with just a small team uh, working on this ATS layer. Meanwhile, uh, in the open source community, there were um, giant strides being made in terms of uh, features and uh, performance. Uh, um, so uh, leveraging uh, the RHEL 6 64-bit architecture, compression, SSL session tickets. Uh, initially, uh, uh, the traffic server did have some uh, stability related problems, segmentation faults, core dumps. So uh, over a period of time, a lot of this has, has improved through good memory management, uh, custom logging enhancements. Cache related work, clustering, uh, support for solid state devices, protocol supports. Uh, recently we've had uh, web sockets being supported and we are moving towards uh, speedy. Security enhancements, uh, perfect forward secrecy, HTTP strict transport security. Um, so basically ATS is kind of uh, now uh, very mature and being used at scale uh, across um, large uh, companies. And uh, the technology fragmentation that I spoke about that precipitated in uh, this decision in August uh, 2013 where the company came together and decided that uh, we need one uh, caching proxy solution and uh, ATS was uh, chosen to be that one. Um, and uh, what this uh, enabled is a bunch of developers within Yahoo were now free to collaborate with the open source community and both uh, gain from their expertise as well as contribute back. Some of the things we worked with the open source community uh, on further enhancing include the stale while revalidate plugin, stale if error, cache array routing protocol uh, related plugin and the SSL session reuse. So some of these uh, existed, but uh, they had uh, certain uh, shortcomings. For example, the RFC 5861 plugin uh, uh, had issues with uh, supporting connection collapsing. Uh, the CARP plugin had issues with uh, generating hotspots. Uh, so some, we, we tried to uh, overcome some of these things. Uh, the code is ready and is uh, getting tested and is going to be tested at scale uh, very soon and hopefully we'll be contributing these changes back to the open source community. Um, so in the last uh, six months, uh, the usage of YTS, our legacy traffic server, has reduced by about 25% and it's going down steeply, whereas uh, ATS has increased by 30x and it's still growing. The recent initiative to uh, encrypt all of, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Oops. 
Thanks, Kit. The recent effort to uh, encrypt all of uh, user traffic, uh, that actually uh, got a lot of properties to adopt uh, ATS, and uh, we are kind of converging on ATS across the company now. Uh, one of the use cases that I spoke about uh, was stale while revalidate and stale if error. Basically, um, uh, when an object is uh, stale in the cache, you typically send the request all the way to the origin and then uh, let the user wait uh, to serve it back. Uh, in order to avoid this and provide a better experience to the user, uh, with stale while revalidate, what you can do is you can actually uh, serve the stale object from the cache while you make an asynchronous request back to the origin and refresh the cache. Similarly, stale if error can be used uh, to uh, serve a stale object uh, while uh, the origin uh, uh, returns uh, an error. So some of these uh, kind of reduces the, along with connection collapsing, it reduces the burden on the origins as well as improving uh, the user felt latency. So, like I briefly told you before, uh, ATS is now used very widely in uh, Yahoo. Uh, it supports like hundreds of thousands of requests per second, uh, hundreds of gigabits per second uh, flows through it every day. Uh, we have two committers, Brian and Kit, uh, uh, contributing to the community. We have six other developers who have contributed uh, various patches, and this list is growing. So I'm very excited that ATS is actually uh, um, doing a uh, comeback in Yahoo in a big way. And uh, with that, I'll hand it over to Kit to talk about uh, business and how open source uh, and business needs to work with together. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Vijay. So uh, that kind of concluded our attempt to trace back the history of uh, ATS uh, through the perspective uh, of Yahoo, right? As you can see, uh, we did spend uh, a few many adventurous years uh, with ATS, and, and throughout this, uh, all these years, we have uh, many experience and many learnings and war stories of uh, how we justify our use case or our choices over the years. And those are actually very interesting, and uh, I think that's uh, worth sharing. So um, the next section will just be uh, uh, focusing on that part for that. So, um, one of the questions uh, we get asked uh, very often is uh, how should we, uh, the, the business, uh, work with the open source software, right? Um, so um, the decision makers are always the, uh, the business leaders uh, who have uh, a lot of expertise in their own uh, domain, right, or their own, uh, in, their, in their own industry. But they may not have uh, enough understandings of the open source culture on or what open source software can do for them, right? So as open source advocates, uh, it's actually our job to try to uh, bridge the gap of understanding here, right? Uh, so the first thing uh, we actually always want to uh, work with the decision maker or the, um, our, our business leader is to actually make sure that we understand uh, what's the business challenges and opportunities, meaning that, okay, uh, what kind of business we are in and what do we need to do to be successful? Uh, those are the opportunities. And for challenges, uh, what kind of obstacle we need to overcome, uh, et cetera, for that, right? So um, I'm going to use uh, our recent projects uh, 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 in Yahoo to actually illustrate the, the next few points when we are talking about uh, business challenges and opportunities. So recently, Yahoo actually um, uh, enabled TLS encryption for all our website and our services. And uh, so this is a, actually a massive project. Uh, we announced our plan of doing such things uh, late last year and we were promising our user, uh, our customer, that uh, we will be enabling the, the TLS encryptions uh, by the end of Q1. And so um, this is a massive project undertaking, right? So uh, Yahoo has so many services that we accumulated over the years. Uh, in the media group alone, we have news, sports, finance, entertainment, and uh, we uh, have multiple different languages, uh, regions, et cetera. And not all of them are actually in the same stack. There are multiple different legacy stack lying around serving websites for Middle East country or maybe some other uh, European countries or uh, for Australia, et cetera, right? So uh, each of them are on uh, a different uh, tech stack, right? Um, so if we actually spend the time to actually go through each of those legacy systems and enable TLS for each of them, it would be a, a massive effort uh, involving uh, 
uh, quite a uh, number of uh, engineers to do that, and we might not be able to uh, make it in time for what we promise our users, right? So um, with ATS and with the features of doing uh, SSL termination that uh, uh, my colleague VJ has just mentioned, uh, we were able to uh, um, uh, do it a little bit differently. So what we would do is uh, we put ATS uh, uh, in the same data center of some of these uh, legacy systems, and so we do uh, SSL terminations. So uh, the connections between our customers and the ATS would be encrypted, while the connections uh, between the ATS and the legacy system within the data centers will stay as uh, plain, simple HTTP. Um, with that, we were able to actually limit the amount of engineers involved in the projects to just a group of experts uh, on TLS as well as ATS uh, to help bridge the gap uh, for that, uh, instead of uh, evolving, uh, involving the entire divisions of engineers. That actually uh, uh, presents a, a really good opportunity for us to uh, allow us to uh, 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 keep our promise to do it in time, as well as uh, save a lot of costs for us. Uh, so that's a perfect example that uh, using open source actually help us to uh, get our features to the market in time and with a um, relatively low cost, right? Uh, quality, when we are doing the uh, TLS encryption projects, uh, uh, there's a lot of features that we add uh, over the last uh, couple of months uh, for uh, ATS, uh, such as the HSTS, um, uh, the RSC uh, 5077, the SSL termination, uh, SSL um, session ticket, as well as things such as uh, PFS, uh, the perfect uh, forward secrecy. And so, uh, without um, uh, the impressive communities of the ATS actually helping us to do code review and, and helping us to actually uh, 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 provide us a, a lot of valuable feedbacks, we will not be able to uh, uh, um, uh, implement and, and enable all these features for that. So, uh, one of the more important uh, factors when we choose open source software is to uh, base, on, base that decisions on the vivid vividness of the community. And um, luckily, ATS is one of the one that uh, I've seen that is uh, having a really friendly community as well as um, uh, very active discussions happen happening all the times uh, on uh, mailing lists as well as IRC for that. So uh, that's actually uh, very helpful uh, when we were uh, having such a, a important projects that is undertaking. Uh, innovations, right? Uh, with such, uh, with ATS providing a really uh, solid and stable basis of doing uh, caching, uh, proxying uh, with high performance, right? We were able to uh, 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 keep our engineers, uh, engineers focusing on things uh, uh, that are actually uh, uh, bells and whistles on top of the TLS encryption, such as uh, what I've mentioned, the HSTS, um, PFS, uh, as well as the, uh, the session tickets, right? So uh, um, picking ATS has also helped us to make sure that we can uh, uh, be staying ahead of the competitions and enable all these uh, uh, really um, advanced features for TLS as well. Uh, talent and people. Um, with ATS and uh, this project of enabling TSL, uh, T TLS uh, for our web service and all our websites, uh, we actually uh, get really good feedback from our engineers and uh, internally. Uh, one of the things that businesses or, or business leaders or decision makers want to do is to keep on uh, retaining and developing talents, right? Uh, with uh, ATS and uh, project like this kind uh, uh, of uh, enabling TLS, right? Our engineers have a lot of chance to work with uh, uh, open source software uh, experts and uh, they get valuable feedbacks and there's a lot of uh, uh, different communication channel that we can uh, explore new ideas. So uh, we get really uh, positive feedbacks from our own engineers saying that, okay, uh, uh, this is actually the right decisions and, and they gain a lot of knowledge and things like that. So um, it's a good way for us to help develop our own talents internally for the company for that. Um, so uh, besides trying to understand what you want or, or what uh, yourself uh, needs to be successful, uh, other things that uh, we as uh, open source advocates want to do is to also uh, try to educate the decision leaders uh, or decision makers or business leaders uh, about the uh, open source culture, okay? And so uh, one of the things that uh, I always tell uh, some of my uh, managers or directors is that uh, open source engineers are volunteers, right? So uh, we don't take money, right? Um, 
So when uh, you need something really uh, desperate, uh, you have features that you want to do, your bugs want to fix, or you have documentation missing and you want to do, right? Uh, you are encouraged to actually roll up your sleeve, get your hands dirty, and contribute. And everybody should be welcome to contribute. And, um, um, and if you get stuck, I'm pretty sure that within the ATS communities, there's a lot of people willing to uh, give a hand uh, to help you out. Um, speaking of volunteers, actually this week is uh, the National Volunteer Week. Uh, it's uh, April 6th to April 12th. And so it is a, a week that is dedicated to honor people who uh, do volunteer works, uh, take time off of their schedules and um, do volunteer works. Uh, I'm not too sure if um, it's, a, it's, a, it's by design or coincidence that the ApacheCon is in the same week, but uh, the bottom line is I do consider all, our, all, all of us, the open source engineers, uh, uh, are volunteers and we are doing good works out of our own times uh, uh, for the sake of battening the uh, software effort. Uh, other things, uh, we want to uh, inform our uh, decision makers uh, that um, uh, changes uh, uh, to open source software should be uh, incremental and uh, the, the business should understand this part. Uh, what it means is that uh, you wouldn't be like shutting the door and, uh, for months and develop some features behind these doors and then dump massive amount of codes at the end of it and expect the community to, to uh, merge the change uh, quickly and smoothly. Uh, it's just not going to be uh, very easy to do so because uh, there will be so many different, uh, so, many, so difficult to do code review and uh, 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 provide you with feedbacks and uh, there will be easily some mistakes hidden uh, behind uh, such massive amount of uh, uh, code change for that. So um, uh, there are ways, of course, if you want to build major features or, or uh, uh, big changes. And for example, such as having a feature branch and then continuously merging from the trunk to the feature branch uh, during your development time, uh, during your development cycles. And there's many other ways to do so. But um, the most important thing is uh, you need to do some communication upfront which next to my next point is uh, uh, the business leaders should understand that uh, communication is a very important part and then um, uh, we all actually work very collaboratively and constructively to, uh, to make our software uh, better for that. Uh, so after we try to bridge all the gaps of understanding and things like that. So now is the time to actually come up with an approach or strategy on try to uh, use open soft, uh, software in my business, right? So uh, how should I do that, right? Uh, there's actually no fixed answer. Uh, each business is unique and different, uh, but uh, we actually want to uh, share with you how we were thinking of uh, uh, growing ourselves into this uh, open model that we want. So. Uh, naturally speaking, uh, uh, um, uh, we would uh, always want to try to see, uh, no, not always, but um, uh, you would come up with something like a centralized model in which we will set up a team within the company and uh, there's so many other teams actually within Yahoo using ATS and they will feed the uh, requirements and features uh, to the centralized teams so that there will be the single communication points with the open source uh, software community. Um, but that will quickly become an open, uh, a, a bottleneck for that. So instead, we want to opt for an open model, or, or we actually uh, are trying to grow ourselves into this open model. Within these open models, right, uh, uh, for example, in Yahoo, um, we have so many teams using ATS, uh, uh, Mail, Search, Flickr, uh, and the Media Group, right? Each of them, they have uh, different uses and they have different features and uh, they have uh, different plans for, for their business, right? Um, all of them should be encouraged to contribute directly. And uh, so what would the central teams be doing is that is to actually uh, educate and, and provide and, and nurture a collaborative culture within the, within the company for that. Uh, they would also be the uh, communication point with the open source software community so that uh, when there's new uh, release or new features coming out, they'll bring it back to the company. They would also serve as a communication point among teams to um, share uh, best practices, uh, design, uh, patterns of usage, as well as uh, configuration tips for that. Um, other factors, other tips uh, that we have adopted uh, in our 
adoptions uh, for ATS uh, include the fact that uh, we uh, discourage uh, forking of the codes, right? Um, so uh, you can fork the code, uh, develop your own features, and generate build that deviates on the source. Uh, we want to discourage um, our engineers from doing so. Uh, that's because it is quickly going to be uh, very hard and difficult to maintain such changes. Uh, as we observe that uh, in the ATS case, uh, changes or improvement are coming in too fast and too often, and you basically run out of your own bandwidth to actually try to merge in those changes uh, uh, as you go on for that. So uh, that's not a, a, a good way uh, uh, for you. Uh, we also want to discourage people from uh, doing hacks or, or quick fixes uh, for uh, their own deployment, uh, except when there's cases in which uh, you need to uh, uh, immediately fix uh, live production issues. But even if for those cases, we should uh, we encourage our engineers to uh, try to come up with a proper fix to replace all those quick hacks and work with the open source community to merge in those fixes and, uh, as much as possible and as early as possible for that. And uh, at the last part, um, we just want to keep stretching uh, the fact that uh, communication is actually very important in this uh, open model of adopting uh, ATS, uh, both internally and externally for us uh, to be successful, to uh, uh, adopt ATS in such a large uh, communities uh, of itself. Um, finally, I actually want to touch a little bit on the benefits of adopting uh, uh, open source or uh, ATS uh, using uh, our open model for that. Uh, once we do this, uh, we started to immediately see differences uh, within our engineers. And uh, uh, engineers or teams, they feel more empowered to uh, make changes. Uh, they no longer think that they are blocked by some other central teams or, or things like that. Uh, 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 they are actually entitled to unblock themselves by participating in the open source uh, uh, directly for that. So. Um, with that, uh, we actually see a lot more participations uh, in our discussion forums, voluntary help increases, and there's a lot more discussions and collaborations happening for that. And that's actually uh, really good. And uh, we also uh, think that quality also improved with so many uh, uh, communications actually happening. And also, there's a lot of reviews coming back from uh, experienced uh, industrial experts from the open source community as well, too. And, um, in turn, we think that this actually really, really helps us in terms of uh, uh, retaining and developing our own internal uh, top talents. And uh, hopefully in the futures, uh, in the not, not too distant future, we will also uh, uh, have the chance of improving our ability to hire and uh, uh, recruit top talents with uh, open source uh, experience, uh, as well as uh, experience in uh, uh, ATS for that. Uh, thank you, that's all. Uh, any questions? Did you have any problems with your lawyers? Uh, in what area? In uh, collaborating and sharing uh, intellectual property with the open source community. Um, internally, we have uh, 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 something called uh, the open source working group. So uh, there's a bunch of uh, experienced engineers and uh, executive actually provide us advice on how to uh, participate in the open source activities. Uh, so whatever we are doing, actually, we actually uh, get a lot of advice from uh, these centralized groups of people, uh, for that matter. Yeah. Good. Thanks. No? All right. Thank you.